All right, so this tutorial is going to cover a workflow from Revit to Rhino and then also from Rhino back into Revit. Uh, and essentially, we could use this methodology for a couple of things um, if we wanted to take this into Rhino to render or uh, like rendering in V-Ray uh, for Rhino, or if we wanted to take this and do some 3D printing uh, out of Rhino because we that'll enable us to do some checks and, and things like that and also do a little bit of model revision in there. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, the first thing you need to do is be in a 3D view. Uh, and so that is going to enable it to actually export 3D geometry. Uh, if you're in a 2D view in Revit, uh, like a floor plan, that's only going to export the floor plan uh, as a 2D uh, representation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go down, pull this file export. Uh, and then under CAD formats, we're just going to do a DWG here. All right, and so uh, you can see the 3D view. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the, the setup here. And we're going to go under all of this stuff. You can see that we right, this is going to name all the layers uh, appropriately. Uh, you guys can adjust that as you think is appropriate. Um, but we're most interested in the solids here. Uh, now, instead of it being the standard here, a poly mesh, which basically creates a gigantic mess, uh, we're going to do it as ASCII solids. Uh, and what this will enable us to do is when we get into Rhino, this is actually going to convert it into poly surface information. Uh, and so we'll actually be able to cleanly uh, adjust some of the models here. So hit OK. And then we're going to hit Next. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, DWG, we'll just call this for Rhino. And uh, 2013 is fine. Uh, if you're going into SketchUp through this methodology, uh, you want to use at least 2004 is what I found to work uh, the best. And so then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And meanwhile, I'll go ahead and pull up my rhinoceros. All right, so we're going to go ahead in here, and I'm just going to go ahead and set my units to feet. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and increase my tolerance. Assuming that you guys are going to be taking this into 3D printing, um, this is probably a good strategy to increase your tolerance. Let's go back into Revit. Um, she says she's ready, so we can go ahead and import that file. It should have been written. All right, and so now let's go on to the documents here. If we scroll down, we should be able to see our 4Rhino file. All right, and we can just hit OK. OK, and so that took about... Uh, two minutes here. I'm going to go ahead and start to delete some of this out. You can already notice that uh, Rhino is going a little bit slow here. But if we zoom in on here, and I'm not going to do a ton of work on this, we can come in here and I didn't, I was not uh, exceptionally uh, thoughtful about how I edited this. I got all the walls, all the furniture, every essentially every piece of geometry that's in there. And if I go into shaded, assuming that this is going to load without uh, crashing my visibility, you can see that now I have a bunch of very nice, clean poly surfaces in here. Um, so that I can take this, and if I wanted to convert this into something I wanted to 3D print later on down the road, um, I could do that very, very easily. Okay, uh, And so that's essentially a really, really easy workflow um, from Revit into Rhino uh, that we can use to get some of the stuff. And, and because all this stuff is set up in layers, we can apply la material by layers. Um, again, if we wanted to render that out, um, if we wanted to take this and, and turn this into something that we could 3D print, uh, we could just literally take this, select all of it, uh, and then create meshes. Because all of this is, we do select closed polysurface. All of that is nice closed polysurface geometry. We could mesh that uh, and then export that as an STL for 3D printing. All right. Uh, obviously, we'd have to do some scaling and pay attention to the tolerance. I've been. I uh, don't want to be too hasty about um, making you guys think it, it should be that easy just to get out of there. But um, essentially, that's that's the workflow that you guys want to get into, and we can start to modify that. Obviously, if you're going to do this, turning off the furniture, door hardware, and things like that will lighten up the model significantly uh, as you get into the 3D printing and stuff. All right. So this is the first part of this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to select all this and delete it. That's the first part um, for getting from Revit into Rhino. The second part of this is going to be going from Rhino back into Revit. And so let's 
say we have something we want to do a really complex curtain wall or uh, we want to do something really freeform that really Rhino is good at doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly create a lofted surface. Let's say we want to do a custom wall assembly or we have something that we're trying to set up in there. Okay, so we come in here and we can just loft that. And we'll just go normal. Okay, so now we have this really complex surface, right? Uh, imagine doing that in Revit. That would take you days, weeks, years um, to get that all uh, modeled up properly. Uh, in Rhino, it takes a couple of seconds. So we want, this will make our lives a lot easier when we go into Revit. And say we want this to be a typical wall assembly uh, for whatever reason, or if we're going to cast this in concrete. Um, we can now export this. And I'll just throw this on my desktop for now. Um, and we're going to do this as a SAT file um, here. So we'll go ahead and go for Revit. All right, and we save that. Sure, AutoCAD's fine. This is designed to commu communicate directly with Revit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a new project. All right, and so now what I want to do is under Massing and Site, I'm going to create a new in-place mass. You can also do this through family uh, stuff, and we're going to call this uh, custom wall. All right, so now we're in the mass editing, and uh, this is where we can start to drop uh, that file. So if we go to import CAD and go on to my desktop and set our file format to SAT files for Revit. And now you can see that that guy just sort of dropped in there. Uh, let's go to 3D view. And that guy is now sitting in there, right? So now what we can do, uh, we can just go ahead and finish the mass, assuming that everything's all good. And it's going to give us an error here saying, hey, this is only uh, infinitely thick, so you can't do some of the other features. It doesn't have a volume. Okay. Um, and th But that's okay, because we're, we're not overly concerned with that. So we go into our floor plan here, we can see that, and it's making that cut really nicely through that uh, at that four foot height. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and say we wanted to convert that into a wall. Uh, I'm going to do a wall by face. And so generic wall, we just click that. And if we zoom in, now you can see that this has been applied uh, to that, that geometry. Okay, and so now if we tab through there's the wall, and we can should be able to pull this away from the mass. There we go. Oh, I accidentally made two of them. All right, but that's a really simple way to go ahead and get that stuff in there. Um, this works really well if you wanted to create some custom hardware and plug that into a model, or um, do develop something, um, some custom piece in a family um, that really you need some free, more free for, free form abilities to model that. Um, and this is really how they, we, uh, both Rhino and Revit have gotten themselves to coordinate and, and communicate with each other. All right.